Good evening and welcome to JW World News. My name is Vern and at Fixing My Faith here we are looking at all of the situations around the world that involve Jehovah's Witnesses. Now this information again has come from watching the Watchtower and uh, thank you very much. And uh, if we go to the location of this particular news, it's, it's right here. It's in the United States, just south of Denver, Albuquerque uh, is where, close to where it's at. And this is the Gonzales School Community School Board, right here where this incident has uh, taken place. So we're going to get right into the uh, situation. Um, the headlines are judge, judge refuses to set plea hearing for accused child molester orders, mental evaluation. And uh, always uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, you know, it seems like they want to, to plea bargain and they, they don't want to go to court. So the judge says, no way, you're, you're going to take some mental evaluation. We're going to get you into court. So the judge said no. So a state district judge refused to set a plea hearing for an accused child molester Thursday instead of ordering instead ordering a mental evaluation after Robert Apodaca tried to plead guilty to charges which would have exposed him to 45 years in prison. Apokada, Ap Apodaca, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, Apodaca, told Judge Mary Marlow Summer during a status conference he wished to plead guilty to sexually abusing a 12-year-old boy who was a student at the Gonzales Community School. And one of the several, this is one of the se several public schools in the city where he had worked as a health aide between 2012 and 2020. So here's this guy, Robert Apodaca. That's the guy right there. So, uh, not the guy walking, that's some news. Okay, so here's what happened. Um, he pled guilty and he worked as a health aide in these schools. So here's the boy that he molested. He is a member of the same local Jehovah's Witness congregation. So this guy's Jehovah's Witness and the boy, also a member. Uh, he told the police that, Apodaca reached into his pants and grabbed his genitals approximately a hundred times over the course of about a year in Apodaca's car at home and in the nurse's office at school. Wow. Can you imagine the little boy having to deal with all this? Apodaca, who, said, who also worked in Santo Nino Regional Catholic School, teared up Monday when he told the judge he wanted to make it correct with the family and not drag them into court. He is facing charges for four separate cases. He says, I just wanted to clear this one up specifically, not the other ones. <laughs> After confirming with Deputy District Attorney Haley Murphy that the plea to the three felony counts of criminal sexual co contact with a minor would expose up Kodo for a 45 year in prison, of which he would have to serve at least 85%. And the judge asked Apokoto if he wanted to proceed, knowing uh, what was possible, what, what the outcome was. And he says, I don't want to bring you in here and then you equivocate, the judge said. Now it's time to be real clear. So it's between the range, Apokoto asked. It is between the range, Apokoto asked. No, it's 45 years, the judge said. I have to look for more mitigating circumstances. In my heart, Apoto began, the judge interrupted him. I'm asking you a straight question. I will look for mitigating circumstances, but if you don't find them, that's what it is, she said. It sounds like you're still e equivocating. After asking what equivocating meant and receiving an explanation, Apodaca re repeated his desire to plead guilty. Now, what does e equivocating mean? Uh, let's just look at Google. It says it's a ambiguous language so as to not conceal the truth or avoid committing oneself. Equivocating. Not that we are aware of. She equivocated. You see, that's what the governing body, that's what Jehovah's Witnesses do. Jeffrey Jackson, Jackson did this in the Australia Commission. They equivocate. Uh, not that we're aware of. You see, they, they, they use vague terms and, and then they you know, it's a waste of time going to court. So the judges are getting small, smarter. They're saying, no, 
You're going to go for mental counseling and then we know you can't equivocate. So that's right, Your Honor, he said, I'm afraid, but like I said, with this family, I hurt them and I'm friends with them and I made a mistake. Yes, I'm unsure because I'm afraid, but I feel in my heart this is the right thing to do. So if it's 45 years, then it's 45 years. So at least the guy's facing up to it, right? So Summer asked if mentally competency had been raised in the case and well, the court is going to raise it right now, she said, after being told it hadn't. And because I'm really concerned about the number of years, I just want to make sure he's competent to stand trial. So th this is what's happening. Judges are really uh, going to the extreme to make sure that when they prosecute, uh, this guy can't get out. Because you really only have one time to prosecute. So you get a mental, um, get him to mentally acceptable, and then you can go ahead. So his motivation here is very much tied to his congregation and his place within that congregation and his relationship with God, Level says. I don't think it's a competency issue, she continued. A lot of this is coming from what he thinks he needs to do as a Jehovah's Witness. Apodica nodded as his lawyer addressed the court. However, Summer ordered an expediated competency evaluation and she said would not set a plea hearing in the case until the evaluation was returned. <clears throat> She says, I want to make sure he understands his rights at trial. So the judge has already rejected two plea agreements, including one which would have resolved the case against Apotica and given Summer discretion to sentence in between 18 and 30 years. So Summer rejected the first plea in December after the victims objected in the part. They said because it would have allowed him to plead no contest instead of guilty. So she refused to accept another plea in January and the term of which were not put on record after Apotica said that he hadn't had time to fully discuss his possible defenses with his attorney. So earlier this month, an attorney representing one of Apotica's four accusers filed a motion telling the court that the first judicial district attorney's office dismissed the charges related to his client's days after his mother objected to the plea agreement, which would have resulted in the dismissal of his claims and in making access to the teenager's protected mental health records a condition for refilling them. So the state never interviewed his client, who is the only one of the accusers who says Apotica raped him or asked for the records prior to dismissing the case, pending further investigation according to the motion. The district attorney's office has not filed a response and declined to comment, comment on Thursday. So that's the end of that article and uh, we have another one coming right up uh, dealing, with the, uh, dealing with some more of this. So this article was May 11th, 2023. So that's the end of this news article. Thank you very much.